my name is Jay Kimmelman. I'm the co-founder of Bridge International Academies. Um, as you know, for, you know, Bridge for the last 10 years has been spending uh, an enormous amount of energy, effort, and, and investment to do research and development and figuring out how do we make sure that every child can attain its potential, particularly uh, in the developing world. And so today we educate more than 100,000 children across five countries um, with the use of technology um, and research to figure out how to make sure that children can attain their dreams. And so um, it was amazing uh, to be introduced to you over a year ago uh, to start our project in Liberia. Yes, good. And, and so far the partnership has been very good. Uh, by way of background, uh, for those who don't know, Liberia is a country on the west coast of Africa with a little over um, 4 million people, 1.5 million kids in school, and the learning outcomes are dismal. And so when I got to the ministry a little over a year ago, I thought to myself, things cannot be the same uh, within the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. We can't do things as usual. Uh, we, we had Ebola, we had a 14-year civil war that destroyed the entire school system. So we have to be radical. And one of the, the radical things we've sought is with Bridge and others to accelerate learning outcomes. Basically, a public-private partnership, as you know, to be able to contract private providers to help government manage schools with KPIs um, to improve learning outcomes. And we now have um, 94 of those schools with um, a little under 28,000 kids uh, funded through private philanthropy. And um, we're looking at scaling that because already we are seeing success. George, when we first met, you came and visited uh, us in East Africa. Tell, tell, sure, tell I was in um, around the Christmas of 2015. I. When I learned about Bridge, I took a trip, you know, to East Africa, specifically Kenya and Uganda, and I went to many of the schools um, that Bridge uh, operates there. And I wanted to see what was special about this. And the first thing that drew me to it was, one, I saw students reading at grade level, and this was a difference from where I uh, came from. Uh, and then I also saw parental buy-in. And many of the parents, if not all, are from very poor areas. So giving in Africa, many governments have legislated free and compulsory education. Why was it that a poor parent was willing to spend six to seven dollars a month to take their child out of a public school into a low-cost private? And I got that insight mm -hmm. and the parents told me that they saw a difference in their children and so when I went back home I became convinced that this was something Liberia should adopt but we should do it in a public-private partnership. You know when when you invited us to come uh, and meet with yourself and your team and the president I don't know if I told you this but the thing that was most inspiring um, for me was having a ministry and a president who said, you know what, what is happening today can't continue to happen. We're going to do something radically different and bold, and we're going to do it at scale so we can affect the whole country. And so when we saw that, that was when, from our standpoint, we said, we need to, we need to do this partnership together. And so to now, you know, fast forward, you know, just a number of months, and, you know, today, you know, uh, Bridge Partnership Schools is educating, you know, 8,000 children across, uh, across Liberia. Um, and to see the difference it's making, as you said, not just for the children, but to see the parents' support of that. The and, the and the communities. And the communities, that's right. And the teachers, right? So yep. I mean, we go now and we see you know, teacher attendance sitting north of 90%, whereas you know, the baseline is unfortunately much lower because teachers are now seeing when they're given the technology, when yep. they're given the, the, the support, the training, the content, mm -hmm. they're actually able to get the kids to learn. And so that's now, that's now creating a new sort of passion amongst, I think, your whole teacher cadre, which is exciting. And, and on top of that, we shouldn't forget, there is political buy-in, mm. uh, the senators and representatives want this in their districts. They already see the value. Now, as a government, what we are faced with now is, what's more? After the pilot year, yeah. as you know, we are independently evaluating this. Uh, we want to scale. This is going to be expensive. 
um, we're looking at development impact bonds to do this and um, putting one together is our priority now. And I think it's a, it's a pretty unique opportunity to have, I think, um, a government that wants to do something bold, a, a proven operator with research showing that we can actually generate learning outcomes, and an existing project that we're now, as you said, looking to scale up across the whole country. You know, this could be a model for how we can scale education gains and finance education gains for countries around the continent, around the world. And you know, we've had a conversation. This is not without opposition, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have teachers unions mm -hmm. and different people who feel that it is denying children their rights. Um, I think the moral argument is on our side. The schools that are filling are in the poorest areas of our countries. Mm -hmm. They don't have uniforms, they don't go to school because of fees, they're hungry, they have no income to send. And what we are doing is to send those children to school, providing all of these things to them. And I think, you know, when you're doing something bold and new, there's always going to be people who want to protect the status quo. But thankfully, you know, in Liberia, with the work that you're doing and that we're doing together, this is showing that powerful public schools are possible to have across the whole country. Sure, and the public school in Liberia, we're beginning to see, will be an example for the private school. Absolutely, yes. It'll, it'll, you know, competition is what, you know, is gonna start to breed excellence, and so, you know, this is all gonna benefit the communities in each of these locations. And this, we hope, will be the effect for the entire public sector. And so when you think about it, if you can actually, if we can actually drive these education gains that we're seeing at, at the smaller scale across the whole country, Obviously, the effect on the families and these children's lives is profound, but if we can scale this to the whole country, we're talking about effects on the economy that will go back and pay for itself over time. Sure, and um, it will be interesting to, in six years to look back and see that children are reading at grade level mm -hmm. and at internationally acceptable standards and that a kid has that confidence and that uh, you are producing people who meet the needs of the economy and can therefore contribute to their society in a very healthy way. I think it's going to be uh, an amazing thing to see. Well, thank you. Thank you.